Hello friends, this video on sexual reproduction in flowering plants part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us talk about insect or animal pollination. So let us see what is insect or animal pollination. So what are the characteristics of the plants which are pollinated by insects or animals? So mostly they are colorful because good color tends to attract insects or animals. They also have a typical fragrance. Now it is not necessary that only good smell attracts insects or animals. For example, foul smell also attracts some animals like flies and beetles. So a very specific smell. So whether it is good or bad, but a specific smell is there in most of these plants. Nectar. So now as the plants come, they should, I mean as the insects or animals come, they should also have some interest in coming towards the plants. That is what? That is nectar. So nectar is like a reward to the insects. So it is not necessary that pollination will surely happen. Sometimes the visitor consume the pollen or the nectar and they just go off. But pollination doesn't happen because they do not carry it to the stigma. So those kind of insects are called pollen robbers or nectar robbers because they are just robbing away the nectar and pollination is not being done. Now what happens is that whenever the insect sits on the uh, flower, pollen grains stick to the body of the animals or the insects. Now when they go and sit over the stigma, so those pollen grains which were stuck to the body of the insect, they are released and pollination takes place. So here you can see this is how an insect sits on the flower, right? So what will happen? The pollen grains will stick to the body of the insect. Now when the same insect goes and sits over the stigma, the pollen grains are again released and pollination takes place. So this is how insect or animal pollination takes place. Now there is some special relationship between certain insects and plants. And let us take the very famous example of the yucca plant and the moth relationship. So yucca moth relationship is a relationship which is of mutual benefit. So in the picture you can see the yucca plant, the white colored flowers are their flowers and the insect which is moth. It, is, it resembles to some extent a butterfly. So how do they share a mutual relationship? A relationship where both of them get benefited. Now the plant gets benefited because this moth flower helps in its pollination. So moth helps in pollinating the flower that is how the plant gets benefited. But what is the benefit of the moth? So this moth deposits its eggs in the locule of the ovary of the flower. As I said, what is locule? The cavity inside the ovary. So these moths, they will actually deposit their eggs inside the locule of the ovary. So how does it benefit the moth? So the young ones are uh, remain protected and they get their nourishment and everything from inside the ovary. So that is their benefit. So both of them get mutually benefited in this relationship. So let us see how exactly the uh, interaction between moth and yucca takes place. Now male and female moth meets and they mate on the yucca plant. So they, these moths remain dormant and they remain under the soil. When favorable conditions return, both male and female moth will meet and they meet and they mate on the yucca plant. So when they mate on the yucca plant, after mating, the female is now ready to lay eggs. So what happens when the female is ready to lay eggs? So this female then goes to a yucca flower because it wants to lay its eggs inside the ovary of the flower. So it will go to a flower. So it will collect the pollen from there. How does it collect pollen? It has what tentacles. So here you can see the tentacles. So these are the tentacles and with the help of these tentacles it will suck in the pollen from the flower. And then what will it do? Now when it sucks in the pollen, then it goes and it reaches another flower. So now what happens is, let us suppose this is one flower. So this is flower number one. This is flower number one. This is flower number two. This is flower number three. So And they are all yucca flowers. So this is the male and the female. So the male and female mated here on this flower. So once they mate it here, now after mating, the female will be ready to lay eggs. 
Now the female will suck in. What will it do? The moth will suck in the pollen from here. So it will collect the pollen from here. So the pollen grain is there with the female uh, moth. Now this female moth will then reach another yoka flower. So the female moth reach here. So now this female moth already has the pollen with it. So what does it do? It, now it is also ready to lay eggs and it also has the pollen. So it will lay eggs in the locule of the ovary. So here it will lay its eggs inside the ovary. After that, it will also deposit the pollen in the stigma because it already had the pollen. So what, what happens here? Pollination is also done on the second flower. Pollination is also done and laying eggs is also done. Right? After this, what does it do? After this, it will move on to another flower. Now, why it moves on to another flower? That is the next question. Now, this, this female moth might lay multiple eggs. Now, all the moths lay their eggs inside the ovary of yucca flowers. Now, the ovary can accommodate only a fixed number of eggs. Correct? So, now, it, it is possible that maybe it lays few eggs on this flower again, the rest of the eggs on the other flower or again it goes to some other flower where it will mate with the male. So, it, it can do anything. Now, before it leaves this flower number 2, it leaves a message or it leaves a signal to inform other moths not to lay eggs there because it has already laid eggs there or to lay fewer eggs. Because as I said, the ovary can accommodate only a fixed number of eggs. Now let us suppose already some 10 moths have come and they have laid their eggs in the ovary. That means there is no, not much space or not much nourishment available now to lay more eggs. So every time a moth who lays its eggs there while leaving it leaves a chemical and that chemical, the presence of that chemical will actually tell the other moths that okay, these many legs have already been laid here. So that the other moths either they do not lay their eggs there or they lay fewer eggs. So that is their uh, strategy. So and that by leaving that message in the form of the chemical, it moves on to another flower. Now, the eggs which it has left inside the cavity of the ovary, what happens to that eggs? After a few days, after some time, the eggs hatch. Correct? So what will happen? A larva is formed. So when, how will the larva get its food? The larva gets its food from the yucca seeds which are present inside the fruit. So now the after fertilization, the ovary turns into the fruit. Earlier it was ovary, inside the ovary you had the ovule. So now the ovary turned into a fruit and inside the fruit you have a seed. So this is the fruit and this is the seed. So now the larva which is formed, that larva will get its food from the seed. Now after it receives its nourishment, after it finishes of its eating, it burrows out of the fruit. It makes a hole in this fruit and comes out of the fruit. And where does it go? It goes deep inside the ground. So the larva feeds on the yucca seeds. Okay, that is how it gets its nourishment. Once it has got enough food and it is big enough, it burrows out of the fruit and then it goes under the soil and make their cocoon there and then remain there dormant for quite some time. Again when they grow up, it comes out of the soil, again it meets the male counterpart on a yucca plant and this process continues. So this is how the relationship between yucca plant and moth continues. So in this type of a relationship, and this is not the only relationship where mutual benefit there exists. There are many other relationships between a plant and an insect where mutually they get benefited. So the insects pollinate the plants and the plants also give some benefit to the insect in some form. Thank you. Please visit www.examphio.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.